G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Uh, welcome to my video channel here, and we're going to do a beautiful portrait layout of a um, tutorial today for you beginners. This picture was sent in by Friere Demois, one of my Facebook friends, and um, she's from Paris, France there. And it's got a few elements that I like to use in my channel here, so that's why we're going to use it today. And the canvas board is 30 centimeters by 42 centimeters and like I always do I pull to the side so the colors can go up there so you know what colors we're going to use in this video today and you can always get the chance to stop it pause it and write them down and be sure to thumbs up like and subscribe to my video there and check out the links in the description below now I'll just show you the picture that we're going to use okay on my monitor here you can see we've got some mist dark elements, some planetary glare, and obviously the Eiffel Tower, and a bit of a foreground. So it's gonna make for a good subject. All right, before we get started, I've been to Jackson's Art Supply again, and um, I bought more paints and medium. I got another retarder. The Atelier makes the brand that I, that's the brand of paint I use, and they even make the same retarder, so I bought that one this time. And some little Atelier Flow paints. These are come into a little, like a little squirt bottle, which I found, I'll give them a go, I reckon they're gonna be quite fun. And I've got some more yellow green. I love buying stuff. Oh, and the lady's name down at Jackson's Art Supply in Balcata, Perth here is Michelle, lovely Michelle. If you're watching, Michelle, hello, how are you? And thanks for your help. Anyway, that's that out the way. Now we've got a white canvas. You can either do this, as you've seen of the picture, on a black canvas, but I think we'll just go from a white one because if it's a black one, you've got to soak it all in this stuff first to get the colours to mix. But we want the white not to mix on top of black, but we want it to merge into the black, all right? So that's why I'm gonna use a white canvas. And I'll grab a pencil, where is my pencil? And going by the reference picture, it's got quite a low horizon line somewhere down here. All right, so that's gonna be roughly my horizon line. And we're gonna glare here and some sort of planetary. So obviously make sure you've got your round stencil cutouts in various sizes ready as well okay did you see the way i grabbed that from over there i just went oh i like doing that when i edit it's like this g'day over here over here there you go i just like mucking around all right so let's get started we need now message me on facebook there's a link in the description below tell me you met me on youtube and you want to be my friend I can send you the link for this because some people want the exact same stuff that I'm using, okay? It's Global Student Paint and it's acrylic in pasto, okay? You can buy this online. That's the brand, Global. But um, what's that other paint? Ac Acrylocrime or something like that do the same sort of thing. Different name but same product. Now we need our retarder. Bit of a mist bottle and some brushes oh and we're gonna we're gonna do it in um black i won't use black i'm gonna use Payne's gray so i'll use that one as the darker color so we'll get that onto the palette as well all right we'll put a light mist of water on there it's a very hot day here in perth i better grab some more of the retarder now normally this is a white primed up in white okay but we're going to use the Payne's gray with the retarder and i want to get the top of this see now this has that sort of bluey black color in it that's what i like so i want to get this virtually done down to my horizon line there all this black color is this falling down that needs more retarder in it because it's not spreading the way I want it to. Maybe this needs more water. Now she will. F yeah, look at that. It's a very dry day here. The canvas was dry and wanting. So I'm going to bring that down to my horizon line. 
get it all in there. Now this is just the retarder and the Payne's grey. I want to try and even up that black value now. So I'll get it there down to the horizon line like that. Now what I want to do is start putting the mist. As you can see in the picture there, there's a lot of mist before the clouds are happening. So I want to get some titanium white. Oh, my lid's on so tight. Just out of the tube. I want a blending brush. Now if you've never done this before, practice to blend the way I teach you to do it before you try and do it in a painting. And I want a brush to apply it. I'm going to use my hog bristle because I can control where I want all this stuff to go. So I'll just dampen the brush and dab it dry on my paper towel just to condition it. Now I want to use this to create some mist. So this paint now is wet, it's got retarder in it, it's not drying on me. If I didn't put any retarder in there, it'll probably dry on me. So I want a bit of a glow maybe here first, around this area. So I'll sort of get that on there, dance it around, try and get it all off the brush. See, I'm moving the brush this way and that way. I'm, if anything, wanting a dome sh amount of white there. It's not going to be white, obviously. And now I want to blend that into... So I'm stamping on, stamping, finding the movement that the paint's starting to do and twist and stamp as I go, okay? And then I'll find what's happening. There we go. I can see what's happening. We're starting to get mist. You want to bleed it right up into nothing. Bleed the living buggery out of it. Now use a rag or a towel to wipe your brush as you're blending to keep the blending the way you want it because your brush is building up paint all the time. So we've got that main amount of glare that I wanted there. It's some glare on top of that black. And that's what I was looking for. Hopefully my camera's picking up black. Black can be a, a wet, shiny black surface can be a bit of a bugger to film at times. I think that'll do. Now in the picture there is a forceful glare over this side. It's not a planet or anything, but it, it is some intense glare. So we'll get that on there. Still wiping the same blending brush and trying to get that to... I'll stamp the middle first to get rid of the brush strokes. Wipe it. And then I want to condition that coming outwards into that black. Just like that, all the way around just so we've got like some sort of intense glare vaporing out in a round sort of motion -y circle. And you can always pick up that paint, intensify it. I'm just quickly using my finger now because my brush is all contaminated and soften that back into that glare as well. Wipe your brush. So we've got a real intense bit in the middle. It's just something to make it look artistic. Okay, I'm happy with that. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is try and just, we're not going to copy exact. If you can, you can. If you can't, don't worry. But you want this sort of cloud shape happening on the black canvas now, okay? So I've got my titanium white, the good stuff. And I'll use that picture as a reference just so I can get some sort of cloud layout. So we'll have maybe something here where that planet's going to be. So we've, we're sort of doing clouds like that, like I normally do. And keeping the top bit there and blending down. Same over here. And then we'll give it some other stuff in front of it. Distinctive more clouds leaving that there and blending down just so as we got some misty clouds going on there get rid of that fluffy bit at the bottom there I don't like that 
merge it, merge everything. Don't be shy with it. Now I've got to wash that brush. Hang on, I'll just tickle this up a bit. It looks a bit mechanical to me. All right, we'll continue. So I want some cloud virtually billowing up here and coming down. So there's my cloud. You'll see when I blend it how I've designed that cloud. That's the top of it. I want some of this to blend in with that black and start becoming grey. I want tickle the tops a little bit. I want different tones in there, high, low and dark, and twist it just think like a cloud and it'll come like a cloud, okay? Look at that. That was very easy. I'll get rid of those two spider eye looking things up there. And also, that that's done. We can come back and put like little bits of yumminess in it like that. And just carefully, with another brush wasp, you know, sit that back down as well. You don't just stamp it on and leave it. Unfold your artistic wings and grow within your art. See, we've got some brightness there. That's how easy it is. Learn detail in your painting. Get this one. Just You're just blending it, kissing it into there, blending it down. You're adding that, like I've always said, yumminess. A beautiful cloud needs yumminess. Without the yumminess, it's a bit flat. Yeah, and see like this one we just done here? We'll put some <coughs> yumminess in there wherever we feel it might need it. It's just creating the the depth of it all. If you can you can see what I mean by the way it's looking on the canvas. Be sure to wipe everything. If you forget to wipe and you just keep going and going, you're gonna that's where you start saying to yourself, how come it works for him but not for me? It's because you didn't bloody listen. Simple. All right, let's keep going. I've washed that brush again and we need some more cloud layout. So we'll probably put some, and we'll put just the slightest bit of mist up here because that looks a bit, so I just sort of do some lines like that, little spider lines. And we want to sink that and turn it into mist just so it's not raw black up there. Twist around, let your brush do all the manipulating. That's what your brush is for. Did that? Yeah, let me have a look at that. Yeah. If I look in my monitor, I can see where I've got to change things up. A bit misty. We're picking up more white paint, and we want, say, some clouds here now. So we'll just. Just do your cloud any old way. Don't try and copy the reference. And twist, merge, and blend these clouds in. Give it some sort of bottom up here, maybe. How's that looking? Yeah, that's looking all right, I suppose. We've already got some yumminess in there. Now, I've got to wash this brush again to put some more down here. Okay, we'll get something coming around. Try and keep the tops of your cloud. I want the tops of it, if anything, coming down this way now, like umbrellas. Now, I'm going to blend. From the inside of that cloud to the outside edge of the canvas here see what i'm doing i'm just i'm not thinking i'm on off on off moving moving this way that way now see see the edges here they look all right but why i like to tickle the tops gives that bullshit effect of my god you didn't paint that bullshit that's good that's the bullshit effect a lot of you know the bullshit effect some of you might not now we want to get this a bit more grey looking so we can put another pillowy bit in front of it and it's acting like layers of luscious cloud. Just like that. Try and make it even if you can. Tickle the top a bit there. Oh golly, it's even I make mistakes. Tickle it a bit. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. 
wash that brush again now this is just all good titanium white out of the tube now we'll put some about here now we're putting some more in front of that and it's going to start laying down i'll use a smaller brush now because i'm getting a bit smaller i want to keep the bright top of that on there so you can see the different layers of clouds happening tickle the top a little bit now if you feel your clouds like i'm feeling it here so i'm going to tell you and explain to you why if you're feeling they're looking a bit bland and dull that's where you pick up your yumminess get the yumminess on there okay put it on there and just gently sit it down onto the cloud look at that it's already changed it i hope the filming is picking up this gray good because in real life it's looking better than what it does on camera okay now we'll just put something here so we want something on its own about here maybe coming just across there see these blending brushes i've just been wiping them i haven't gone and washed them yet now blend from halfway down bring the edge up into the painting there stamp it dab it move it stamp it dab it move it we'll get sort of a tail out in this one here to give it that look we're going for in this type of painting we've already got our yumminess there I'm going to soften that down. It looks a bit brush marky. Okay, and then we'll just finish the bottom of this off with some. It's going to virtually be layers of distant horizon clouds there, just like that. There we go. Get a bit more going. The trick is to do a bit at a time, leave the top on there and bring it down to the very distant atmosphere. Better put some yumminess back there. These are just very long clouds now to the distant atmosphere. Better fix that up. And then bring all this down to the atmosphere because we're going to have stuff in front of this here bring it down bring it down bring it down we can keep going on with this until the cows come home but i think we've got enough cows in the paddock now so now we'll put some planetary systems in here before we do that, I just want to grab that white, wet it a bit more, grab a toothbrush, get it right into those bristles, just test it somewhere. I've got some black paint there. Yep, they're going to come off okay. And we've got to put the stars in before the moon slash planets there, otherwise the stars will be in front of it. So I've got to, I want some there don't go overboard you want to try and get not too many of these in front of the cloud oh yes i see a big ugly blob there but that don't matter that'll do we got some stars on there now we just got to put a bit of a planet here and a sort of a moon over here type of thing i want to dry it before i put the stencil on there I'm looking for my sponge oh here we go we want a household sponge something with fine pores in it anything you can use practice stamping some moons or round objects that fade away onto a surface and practice that before you put them into a painting as well because if you haven't done it and you're watching a tutorial and you go for it you're gonna think my god what am I doing wrong you need to practice everything all right so I've just got titanium white and toning gray out of a tube they're the two colors we're going to do and I want to have a moon here evaporating and same over here a smaller size so I want to dampen this I just get my spray bottle it's a bit damp now I'm not going to tape it on there because I've dried that but I could still see some wet bits but I don't want to 
tape it on there in case I ruin it. So I'm getting this on my sponge. Hopefully, where do I want it? I want it about there, say. So I might just tape that. Oh, no, that can sit there like that. Now, here we go. I just want the very bottom of this. Just like that. See what I've done? I'm going to turn my sponge around, pick up the grey, put a bit of grey in there, not too much, because we need the colour of the actual sky that's to make up the dark side of it. So I'm going to put that back in there a bit, just like that. Now I'm going to pick up the white, and the white is going to highlight that bit of grey now. Get, let's get some on the sponge. Get up there. I just want to fix that corner up. And maybe here. That's it. Now I'll just take that away. That bit of lighter colour of it there, I'm just pushing it back out with my finger because I didn't want that. I just wanted it sort of evaporating like that. I'll probably, I'm using my finger, I've got my glove on. I can dab some of this into the white, control the shape of the white where it's going as well. I want it about like that, wipe my finger. So I'm using my finger pretty much like a brush, I suppose. That'll do. Now, we just want to slightly sit that down with some cloud in front of it. So dry it again. Now, I'm grabbing two brushes, one to put on and one to blend, just to bring some of those clouds in front of that planet slash moon, whatever it is in the picture. So we've got, we'll get this that's dry, remember? So try and work a bit quicker than what it was when it was wet. Blur that in front of there. It's sitting it down. Is that working? Yep. I want to make sure my head don't get in the way as well. Uh, what else can we do? We could put probably some of this there. Sit it all into there and in front of the moon. Okay, and we want some highlighting here. Blend it into that. Get stuff in front. Now just layer that. Why I'm putting this here is the moon's lighting that up. Gives it a sense of more realism. See how quick you've got to work when it's dry? Is there anything we can... Oh yeah, we could sort of bring something... I've noticed in the picture there, there's a sort of a trail of mist coming down over that moon there, like so. So we'll just do that to sit it back as well. Pretty easy, eh? You make sure you practice stuff if you haven't done it. That way it makes it easy when you do it. And that's kind of sat everything down now. And we could probably, if we want, get a bit more glare around here. Brightening that moon up if you want. If you're happy with the way it looks, less is best. Don't touch it because sometimes you can over detail things and you kind of hurt them. Okay, see what that is? That's it. Simple. Okay, we're just going to put a smaller one here. So I've got my pouncer this time, my round pouncer. If you like doing this sort of art and you don't have these tools, go and buy them, put them in your arsenal. I've dampened my pouncer and I'll get it on the side that I just want the planet to be. I'll put this there, say about there. And I only want to do 
from about nine o'clock to five o'clock and I just want to lightly scratch it up into that black okay just like that could probably manipulate some darkness in there that's it yeah like that that's better all right and take that away and it was that easy all right next thing we're going to do i'm just going to freehand the eiffel tower okay just something to that shape it's pretty easy so i've got my mid-tone gray out of the tube and i sprayed it and i'm going to just use that color and get it onto a script liner and we've got to work upwards well i want to work upwards so I've pretty much put my point of reference where I want the top of the Eiffel Tower to finish, which will be probably there. And we'll come down to maybe about here. And where are we? Down to about here. Okay, so that's, I'll put the main, I'm just going to copy it. It'll probably be abstracty now, who knows, but it's art. So now how you don't get such a wiggly line what i do in my head i'm putting the brush on then i start but if anything i'm looking at this way where i'm going and my hand just follows that motion so you watch and plus i'm twisting this brush as i go and that got up there without a problem okay so i'm going to do the same to the other side practice this as well if you don't think you can do it i'm twisting the brush as i go and we'll get it up to there all right, we got it up to there. I'm just going to do the main frame sort of thing. So this is a bit wider there and there. And how far up? About there. So we want to bring that around like that. It's pretty easy to do the Eiffel Tower if you do it this way. That looks a bit crooked on camera because of the way the camera is. Now we have a straight bit across here. Go out a bit out a bit from there and then from here it's going up again to another bit which is about here oh mine turned out to be taller than the other one and we've got a bit there okay now this goes to that so we bring that around up into the middle of that same on this side Bring that around up to about there. All right, so we're still continuing, just copying the frame roughly, and we're going to start getting all this mesh crisscross stuff in. Make sure your brush is quite runny and flowing for this to happen. <laughs> I'm just going to grab a bit of the black I've got. Where are we? We've got the shadow in the areas where it's got to go. And like I've said before, shadow brings paintings to life when they're put in the right spot. So we've done all that to map out our shadowing area, okay? I'll bring that down there a bit. We detail this now and then it won't look like snot. So I'm back to the grey again, very liquidy. And I want to, now, we want to go again, get this over there, just like so. And then we've got some faint bits just faintly coming down. <laughs> just detailing over the black again before I add the white to fine-tune a lot of the um, shadows so hopefully they're all in the right spot I'm looking at my reference not my reference my monitor so it's like I'm squinting my eyes to see how it's looking so I'm trying to get a, enough shadow everywhere and then I'll highlight it with the white 
which would virtually sit a lot of it down. So we've got some more. So I'm going to try and break some of that those grey lines that look a bit all over the place -ish. I'm trying to break them up with some shadow and in the middle here there's sort of kind of get something going there now I just want to grab the white now I've blow dried all that that I've just done I've just sprayed some white some water into me white titanium white and I want to carefully by not overdoing it try and get bits in front of everything but so we're putting the white to highlight everything now just <laughs> Now, I've dried this. I want to put some black, or if you have it, some gesso black, okay? I'm just going to use gesso black just to get that bottom bit done. I'll just pull it out of the tub and we'll get this horizon line on, which is going to be about there. Okay. I'll get this all painted in. This isn't wet, retarded or nothing. This is just to colour that bottom of the canvas board for our depth of our foreground. I'm going to use this brush because I know it's got an open end. And from about the inside there, I want to I want to create some kind of silhouette. Get that a bit wet. I need this a little bit wet just for this. Just to bring these trees from the in inside the middle to the forward, so it's like a V coming down, and I'll do the same to the other side. Just from inside that leg, slowly come higher up to the outside edge. There, that's it. That's all I wanted to do. So we're going to put this lawn foreground and this row of trees on every side, but we're going to do it, but just our way. Okay, I've mixed up some French ultramarine blue and chromium green oxide. Well, it's just a green, like a sap green, to get this denser green colour that I want to suit the colour of the sky. And now I'm going to start from the inside there and get some of this on. Not too much. And if anything, bring it just a little bit over that black we put on and bring it like umbrellas in front of everything just so it looks artistic and like different trees that's how's that looking in the monitor that's looking fine just like that just like that you want virtually this to be reasonably straight though now we'll do the other side now you can see the tempo is matching the colour of the sky, the atmosphere up above, okay? You don't want this a bright green. These are just a row of trees going into the vanishing point of the picture. Alright, I've just put some yellow oxide into that. Give it the lighter colour of the shadows within the tree. So now I just want to carefully bring them in front and behind each other. How's that looking? You can see what's happening, just the tops. Bringing everything in front and behind of each other. Okay, simple. And we'll do the other side. We're just detailing this tree line here yeah, I need something going here okay I've got my little fan brush I've just put some white and gray in there and roughly this is the 
bottom area there or do the same over here I want to put some just not all of them just some of them with some distinctive trunks I'll start from the bottom somewhere there <laughs> Could have, should have put them in after the, before I did this highlighting. So I'll do that again and sink them back. Now get your dark if you think you've ruined it. And you can dribble some dark up in there, back in there, just to fix everything up. If you think you've gone too mad with your highlighting and stuff which what I feel is what I've done here is that now we want to get the um, the grass in so I want to dry all this all right I've dried all this now we're just going to stamp in our lawn here I'm just going to use this brush because I know it's quite long and flat and I can get bands of forest green that I want on there leaving some of the blacks now I've wet this so as it's going to transfer from the brush onto your canvas and you'll have magic happening all day and you'll be happy all day. And that's the main thing you want when you're doing art is to be happy at what you're doing. Now, if anything, I wanted a slight arch. That's just what my mind's telling me. So we're going to bleed this in everywhere. Get it up to that lighter shadowy colour underneath the trees. And if anything, I want this. See, I've got to wet it more. I feel it's not coming off the brush enough. There we go. And we want to get some lawn happening under there. Leaving darks under the trees where it meets the lawn. And then we'll give this... Uh, another color as well just to break it up but before you do everything with this sort of stuff i dry i blow dry the the canvas so nothing's going to mud up and everything will mix well and if you feel like you've done too much lighter colors add the dark back again all right i've just got the same brush cleaned up i've just got some yellow green on there and i want to let's let's just see if this is going to be too stark it probably will be but it's a painting Let's just see how this is going to look. I'll have a look in the monitor. Mm, yeah, it's a bit loud. I won't use that colour. I'll wipe it. And I'll use that other colour green, the green oxide. That's more of a dull, blander colour. But it'll stand out, hopefully, on top of that. Yeah, because that's the kind of time of the day it is on that grass you can tell by looking at the picture how are we there how's that looking it still looks very bright we can maybe put a little bit of blue in it I'm just scratching some blue into it to <laughs> and I want these if anything straight how are they looking yeah that's all right I think the blue sort of toned it down a bit. Just a little bit. Now see at the top, underneath the Eiffel Tower, where the grass is really thick and blobby, like I told you, you've, I've ruined, in my eyes, I've ruined that. So what I'm going to do is just wipe the brush, pick up the darker colour, Um, and scratch it back in there like this so let's see what's happening you're lessening that brightness down there's a bit of thickness going on here and there I just want to make this more of a bank onto the grass now so it looks more realistic 
So I'm getting that grey with some of the brown here. Now I'm looking there and I want to just sort of I wipe the brush because I don't want it loud. And I want to scratch this edge of the under obviously underneath the trees there's a lot of shade and the grass is not as vibrant as what it is out into the field so I just want to sort of scratch this in there and bleed it into the grass a bit just so as we've got a bit more realism how's that looking that's looking not too bad I've got to keep it straight though otherwise we're going to lose our perspective and we can darken right up in the middle there later on so I'll get here let's get that and scratch it let it fade as you get into the distance and then we'll start bleeding it into the lawn there I wouldn't mind getting on a ride on lawnmower and mowing all that lawn there because when I was married I used to crack a fat mow on the lawn don't know why but I used to love it probably don't as much anymore I love me art all right how's that looking in the monitor that's looking a bit better I won't even clean the brush I'll pick up some of that green that we mixed and you know you could probably trace that back if that's looking too bright which I think it is I'll just wipe the brush pick up the darker color wipe the brush with the darker color on it just so as I can merge some darkness back into there as well see what I've done there I'm just detailing and mucking around here now how's that looking in the monitor that's not too bad probably lost some darkness under here you can put that back as well I'll just do one side so you can see the difference okay let's take the tape off this and we'll put a frame on it get a frame yeah that's not too snotty and it's not too shabby at all we've got the misty sky a resemblance of the Eiffel Tower and some planetary moon systems going there all right all right and once again we'd lo I'd like to th thank Friam Demois, my friend on Facebook who gave us that uh, reference picture from France and check the link in the description below for my catalog of videos I've got over 180 there all, all different varieties and subjects okay and add me on Facebook tell me you met me on YouTube and you want to add me as a friend and chat to me and share your work there as well if you like what we've done tell your friends but if you don't tell everybody all right goodbye good luck and good on you